one of the fascinating things about peated whiskey is that if you enjoy peat in its fullness, it's probably best tasted between five years and eight years. Whether it's mainland peat or whether it's island peat, after eight years, the peat influence begins to diminish. It doesn't change the experience. The, the whiskey continues to improve with the process of maturation, but if you really want the big, big peated experience, it's somewhere between five and eight. Now, this is a different peat. Mainland peat, um, and I'll come back to the age and a, a number of other things, but this is mainland peat. The mainland peat is um, different from Isla peat because it is, comes from the degradation of trees, which is a much sweeter style of peat. Isla, if you've ever been to Isla, there are no trees in Isla. So the peat in Isla is the degradation of herbs and grasses and seaweed. And that maybe is why, the seaweed is maybe why there's a significant iodine or medicinal part of the Isla peat experience. So this is mainland peat and um, we don't apologize for actually bottling this at uh, five years. Um, we knew it was going to be a fairly significant uh, mouth experience. The parts per million of phenols is around about 21, 22, 23. And this was also designed, we had a conversation with, uh, with the maltster saying, look, we want the malted barley to have round about 60, 70, 80 parts per million of phenols in the barley. And uh, this would allow us then to have a spirit cut in the right kind of strength that would give us the kind of 22, 23 parts per million of phenols. But as part of this whole experience, we also this has also been matured in very, very interesting style of oak wood. It's, um, it's a genus of oak known as chinkapin, and it's grown in either in the Missouri area of the United States or up near Seattle. Characteristics are, of course, the underlying part of the the the, the oak wood will give you the traditional um, butterscotch, vanilla notes, uh, spicy notes. But this particular cask gives you quite a lot of licorice notes. And also, if you know the vegetable fennel, it's an English, I'm not sure if it's a European uh, vegetable, but it's a kind of, yeah, sure what you would call it in Europe, but it, it, it's, it's fennel and it's got it, this kind of almost terpene style note. It's a kind of, it's not sulfurous, but it's somewhere in that territory, but they're a, one, they're a wonderful cast to work with. And, uh, and the whole kind of uh, Mikkel Tor releases, we, we wanted to do a original, which is standard casks. We wanted to do a chinkapin, wanted to do a sherry, and we wanted to do a turbo, which was about 80 parts per million. And we, we can talk about that on another experience, but the Chinkabin fascinated me. It was, I think we were the first um, whiskey company to even tiptoe into this kind of style of oak cask. The bourbon people were very nervous about using, the, in fact, they don't, they don't use Chinkabin. We think it works extremely well with, uh, with uh, this kind of release. It's, um, of course, the underlying platform of flavor is vanilla, honey, butterscotch, but it's overlaid by the phenols, the smokiness. And then there's this kind of uh, chinkapin notes of vegetables, fennel, and licorice. And you know what? I think it's at 48%. It tastes totally comfortable. And um, in truth, this is one of a really, really, really terrific experience that uh, it's part of being the Glenalkey journey. Five years, we knew this was going to be good, um, but we also didn't, what we didn't expect was it was going to be not just good, but very special. Enjoy.